the truth behind gaslighting. Now, this isn't a profile video. This is literally a thing that you need to learn that this doesn't just happen to me. This happens to a lot of people. And a lot of people wonder why I'm so content in my position doing things outlandish that are childish because of this. I talked to a guy named The Extremist. One of my favorites in the era who had the same problem that I did that had a losing streak at the end of the season, but it was for the wrong reasons because he slept on every single one of them, but that's only because they were so childish that they forced him to sleep on them. I'm going to put it like this. So, Extremist was Sabo's rival. So, when I came around season two was when Sabo had to redeem himself when Sabo was on a come up because his first loss was against Extremist, but we call him X. And the reason why this isn't a profile video is because I don't make profile videos for cold people. I make profile videos for public people who have never been down that cold road that I don't ever want them to go down because I realize that me and X share more than you think because of the way I hear him online. When I was younger, I didn't know that X was more mature than what he was. I thought that he wasn't mature because he used to act out this and that. And I'm like, now that I'm older, it's a little bit yes and no, but it's way more no than yes. I would say it was 75% yes and literally 10% no because of this. Here's the thing. So Sabo has this thing with the extremist that the extremist is a piece of shit because he talks shit online and he tries to pretend that he's a gay in real life. When Sabo knows that X has went to jail before and X comes out of him like, oh, nigga, you don't even know that anime is secretly what the shit. He didn't know that anime is secretly for hood niggas. If you think it is, it's not. He's speaking metaphorically. It is because you jump to conclusions and you think that that's a fact, Sabo, is why I can beat you in real life. And so Sabo's are like, oh, so you want to resort to meeting people in real life when this shit is over the internet. When you're talking shit that if it was in person, you can knock the fuck out. Sabo is a coward, and to be honest with you, I sided with X. But back when I was a square, I sided with Sabo. That's how difficult the situation is. When I was a nerd, I thought that Sabo won because X used to say some horrifying shit when we were in the car about how... His girlfriend used to lick in between his ass crack and his balls. And I'm like, oh my god, literally this and that. Like, literally the most disgusting shit. And there was this little girl in the car. And literally, she wasn't moaning. She wasn't doing anything. And me and the other guys are freaked the fuck out. I'm like, why isn't this little girl scared of what the fuck X is talking about? And I realized I had a side conversation with that girl. And that girl was so fun. And she told me that she wanted to stay a virgin for the rest of her life. Because of what pussy does to people in society. And she doesn't care what X does. Because X is still willing to talk to little kids. And he's willing to talk to them for a good reason. Just like I am now. There was this time where I had this Home Depot job. Where literally, when Lisa sent a little kid online to go talk to me. And I couldn't be any more happy. And she's all like, wait. Don't you realize that you're talking to a little kid? Well, I'd rather be where a little kid that's fun loving than a try hard gangster. That thinks everything has to be hard for for seven. He was showing me his AMVs for Lincoln Park, and I was loving that shit. The only problem is he kept on calling me too much on my off days. And that was to show everybody that example that I don't care about reputation anymore. I don't care about the street life anymore. I love that little kid. He even commented on the picture when I was turning around, he said, I might want to be some story one day. And there was nothing wrong with the kid. What they're failing to realize is that kid was a good person. They're trying to make fun of the outside situation. Don't you feel insecure about hanging out with a little kid? Don't you feel insecure about hiding the fact that you're still a fucking virgin? And that that gun is your vibrator? And that you don't know how to use that gun properly? And that you break your shoulder every time you use that fucking gun? Okay, so, enough with that. On to the beef between Sabo and the extremist. Sabo comes at X like he's a little kid because he thinks that he's just another anime nerd and that he doesn't know that you have to pick one side of society. Well, no. You can be a jack of all trades. You can like an anime. You know that there are some people out there that watch anime on probation because they have nothing else better to do? You guys are fucking stupid thinking that it's everything. Yes, the majority of nerds are anime fans, but do you know that there are some... Guys that actually watched anime, I had a cousin, I'm going to save him for a later video, who loved anime, who has a daughter now, but pretends to get no pussy just so people will leave him alone. And literally, Sabo has this misconception, but I agree with Sabo. There was this one time where X kept on spamming messages down my throat about his sex life, and literally, 
I blocked him and I sided with Sabo and literally because I was a square and because Sabo was getting more appraisal in the ARL, I joined with Sabo because Sabo was so quote unquote civilized and when I realized what X went through, I'm like, dude, I should have kept X around. X is cold. X is a grown man. X would rather hang around a whole bunch of little kids than people who pretend to be something they're not and I realized that late in the game. And that's why I love the extremists. So here's how me and extremists go. So the extremist was in jail when I battled Sabo. And he got out of jail and he talked to me. He's like, dude, I love your battle with Sabo. I love your flow. I love everything you have with Sabo. I feel like you could take Black and Chaos down. I feel like you have the potential to do everything down. And literally, so he was comparing me to Garbo. So me and Garbo and the extremists had a talk. And Garbo has a disability due to getting into a car incident. And nobody fucking care. I kept on telling Garbo, I love your flow. I like how you sound like G.I. Joe every time you spit. I like how you're more admirable and everybody else sounds like they're gangster. I literally w broke down why I love Garbo style and why I wasn't too much of a fan of the extremists. But what happened was this. So we got into a call about how the battle between me and Saba went. And he thought that I eatered him because he comes from the streets. And he felt like I beat him in terms of street knowledge. But he said that Sabo went on paper, and he's like, I'll put it like this. You were Gohan, and he was Cell. You achieve a transformation, and you let him regenerate. And Sabo got twice as strong, and he only beat you by a little bit. He was on the ground. You knocked him out, but he got more punches in. If you watch boxing, is that you literally hit him haymaker after haymaker, but he used that as a distraction, and he hit you in the right area when it mattered. So basically, we kept on going back and forth talking about, yeah, I really thought you owned them. And so literally, it was crazy. The funniest thing is me, Extremist, and Steezo both come from California. All come from California. It was literally so fucking crazy. And that shit was so many. And the real reason why I stopped believing in X, but before I go into that, he was giving me in most of the speech, like, the only reason why you lost is because you were young and you let him get over your head so what you did was you showed him that you can flat out eat through him but here's what happened Sabo took advantage of the fact that you went for the kill but you didn't go for his throat is what extremists told me you played around with him too much when you could have him with punt sign after punt sign and so Sabo took advantage of that and he started getting technical and he started being you on paper but he knows that if you would have known how hard he could come because I was preparing for the Sabo that fought Jimmy. If that was the Sabo that fought Jimmy, he would have died. Sabo was saving some of that shit for X, literally. And literally, he went all out and he has this complex. And so Sabo, what he did was this. He delayed our battle for one week and he talked shit. And I'm all like, okay, give me your week. He's like, you don't want your loss so soon. I'm like, you said a week, Sabo. And so literally, a week comes by and I come with straight ether. It was fucking crazy, literally. So, on the private chat, he said, you won at heart. Because the only reason why he won is because he was a little bit more experienced. He knows what they want to hear versus what they should pay attention to. And that's the thing about Battle Rap that you have to understand. They're more used to listening to him and they're not used to listening to me. If I had a biased fan base, he could have already got eatered. So, here's what happened. So, Extremist and Sabo scheduled their battle. And so, there was a battle that somebody ducked me when I was going to be Neji. I was going to be Neji for my debut instead of Jalal, but the guy who was supposed to face me ducked, and that guy was Jimmy. The same guy that fought Jimmy, literally, I mean, the same guy that fought Sabo, his name was Jimmy. He backed out, and he ducked me for months and months on end, and literally, he quit the arrow ever since then. I was supposed to face Jimmy for my debut, and I would have killed him, and Jimmy gave me the street code, like, you don't want to be good in that league because they take away your outside when your inside is garbage for everyday ARL, these people are little kids. They don't expand their mind. You watch a ride variety of anime, and that's why I do not fuck with them. And Jimmy stopped getting the calls. Jimmy stopped fucking with their battles. Jimmy stopped doing everything because he realized how they operate. Okay, so anyway, what happened was this. Sabo chose Neji for the battle with Kimimaru after he just beat me when I was Jalaw. And I told him, I'm like, why'd you pick Neji? He's like, because I can so Sabo literally pisses me off, disappoints me, and he beats X on paper. And I was one of the judges for that battle, and I said that X won. Because I said that Sabo had more punt signs, but he was so off topic, and it was Kimi Maru versus Neji. And Sabo picked Neji and pissed me off because he beat X on paper. But what he did was he started talking about a whole bunch of random shit. 
for a distraction. Then he hit him with a whole bunch of jabs. And so he outpointed X, but he didn't beat X in my opinion. I felt like X left on Sabo. So what Sabo did was he made sure that his verses were extra long, but he did get better. But he knows that my battle was better, but he got more appraisal because of extremists and his position. What happened was his verse was more... I would say complex, but it was nowhere near as aggressive as nowhere near as cutthroat as how he came at me. And it disrespected the fuck out of our battle because what he did was everybody knows that Sabo won, but his flow was straight ass cheeks. But it didn't matter because what he did is he made sure he had more punch size. It didn't matter that X had haymakers. He let his verse drag on specifically so he can fool X. So X lost that battle and literally Sabo gets this ego complex because he wants... Just jump it in my face, Riz, I already eaten you. I don't need to accept a rematch. I'm like, you had a rematch with X. So literally, Sabo's just treating me like I'm Sabo of season three and that I'm following his footsteps that I don't want to repeat the same history when I literally almost beat him the first time. And if you go back to Sabo's original battle with X, Sabo got clobbered. And literally, you cannot treat me like this is season one. And literally, so that was the beef between me and Sabo the entire time. But then... X comes back. So, this is when the gas line comes in. So, X just loses to Sabo, but we all know that X could won if Sabo didn't try to trick him. So, here's what happens. So, X writes three rounds for this guy named Jason Todd. And literally, Jason Todd ducks X. He's like, I don't need to battle you. You just lost to Sabo. And so, literally, what fucking happened was... He kept on talking shit to Joss. Talking shit to Jason Todd every single fucking time. And he literally got into Joss's mind. He roasted the fuck out of him every single fucking time. So here's what happened with Joss and X. So Jason Todd chose the Red Hood, which was Jason Todd. And X chose the Incredible Hulk. And the real crazy thing about this battle was X had 11 fucking minutes of straight fucking fire. Straight fucking fire. Punch side after punch side. Really more lyrical. But the thing is... X wrote it for three rounds. So what Jason Todd is, he got his DM. He's like, we're only doing one round. He's like, what? What is wrong with you? Literally, I wrote for three rounds. He's like, oh, we already know we had constructive criticism on the channel. And that three round battle shit, I want run round. Literally, so he put all of his great punch size that he had for three rounds into one verse. And so Jason Todd made sure he had four minutes of straight fire. And he actually beat X. He beat X because X dragged off for too long, but don't act like he didn't trick X into soaring in his bars. So don't fall for this shit that X wasn't in charge the whole entire time. So there was this one time where I, in their mind, beat X, but in the middle, I mean, in my mind, I never beat X. There was this off-screen battle where X joined this league called DCE that couldn't take constructive criticism that literally the air row will always be more popular. You're always going to be in the shadow of the air row. So the air row does this shit where so many people make this mistake. Well, they take advantage of the fact that they're irreplaceable. And that's why there hasn't been a battle on their channel for years. Because none of them have drive. And they got away with being popular. You can't keep that forever. So the reason why I side with X now that I'm an adult. X already co contacted me. But I felt so fucking stupid. I let go of somebody who had to be incognito. I now understand. He has to act like a little kid. So people will underestimate him so he can teach people a lesson. I let my guard down specifically so you can trip over your own balls. I want you to think I'm a little kid just so you can realize I'm right in the future. And I realized that he was right every time. And the real reason why he drove me to the side wasn't because he was being a little kid. was because he knew that the air well was lacking potential. So if he can get a whole bunch of little niggas to cooperate and actually have drive, they can all eat to them. But they all gave up because of the position that X was in. So, literally, so, Sabo and all that, stop with that college shit. You know if this is real life, you could get away with it. Stop acting like you don't use this as an outlet to escape real life. So, that is literally what they got fucked up every single time. Do not believe this shit that being civil is the definition of starring shit and then running away from it. I'm sorry, but that is the definition of gaslighting. You no, know, that's going to happen one day and your tank's going to run out. And by that time, you're going to get attacked by a bunch of bears and deers. When you used to consider them as roadkill. 